Okay, so let's do a similar uh, flat problem. Let's take a ball um, and let's just kick it into the air. And again, that ball is going to go up here and land over here somewhere. This time, let's say um, initial velocity is 20 meters per second. But let's say that this time we don't know what the angle is. The angle is unknown, but we know the ball lands 40 meters away. So then the question could be, what is the angle? At what angle do we have to launch this so that we can go 40 meters away? So this is very similar to uh, what your catapult lab was, except that we are starting on ground zero, whereas your catapult lab, you're starting up here at some height, and so it was a more complex problem. But this one we should be able to solve um, relatively easy. Again, we need to make sure that we have a coordinate system x and a y, and we notice that our 20 meters per second v0 is not, um, is not in the coordinate uh, system, so we need to break that up. So or, this just remind ourselves, our initial question, what angle? Right? Once we have that angle, we can then answer all the other questions, how high, how much time in the air, final velocity, but let's just focus on this one for now. So let's take our 20 meters per second and let's break it up into a horizontal piece and a vertical piece. And the vertical piece will be V0Y and the horizontal piece will be V0X. And we have this unknown angle theta here. Often that's scary. You're like, well, I don't know what else to do. Well, when you get situations like this and you don't know something, continue with the algebra and keep working. I know that the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so sine theta is V0Y over 20 meters per second, or V0Y is equal to 20 sine theta meters per second. Go ahead and just leave it like that. Leave that theta in there, and we'll carry it around, and eventually, hopefully, it will disappear. We'll be able to solve for it. We can do the same thing cosine theta is adjacent, V0x over 20 meters per second, or V0x is equal to 20 cosine theta in meters per second. Now we can go and we say, oh, well, we know our V0x, sort of, I mean, it has a theta in it, but we still know it. We have something that we can write down. So we have our V0, VAT, delta x in the x direction and in the y direction. And let's write down what we know. I know v0x is 20 cosine theta. And I know v0y is 20 sine theta. I know my accelerations, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And I need to know something else. So I think that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick this point right over here. And the reason I'm going to pick that point right over there is because that gives me um, a delta y of 0. So I'm going to say this is a problem to the n. This is the whole problem. And plug in my delta y equals 0 right there, making sure that I've labeled my columns so that the time that I calculate will be to the end and the velocity would be at the end. The reason I'm picking that is because I know something about that. I know that it lands 40 meters. So I know at the end the delta x is 40 meters. So I know lots of stuff. Now, using this x column, I can say I know v0 and I know delta x. Delta x is v0t plus 1 half a t squared. And so I can actually, oh, remember, acceleration is 0. That term goes away. So I end up with delta x is 40 meters is equal to 20 cosine theta times time, which I also don't know, and you're getting frightened right now because you think, I don't know anything, what do I do? Keep going. I needed the time. Time is equal to 40 over 20 cosine theta, and I can simplify that, so time is equal to 2 over cosine theta. Okay, That's the best I can do, but it's, this, it's something, so I can say 2 over cosine theta, and because that's the time, I can share it. This is also 2 over cosine theta. 
and I'll just keep carrying those variables along. Now I can go over into my uh, Y column, and I know a bunch of stuff. Let me see if I can write use one of my equations and write it down and see what happens. So in the Y column, what happens? Let's say delta Y equals V0 T plus 1 half A T squared. I know everything, or at least I have written down everything in that column. So delta Y 0 equals V0 is 20 sine theta times time, and time is 2 over cosine theta plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times t squared, which is 2 over cosine theta squared. And it looks like I know everything in this equation except for theta. So if I solve that equation for theta, I'll be done. So let me simplify, simplify first and cl clean things up. So 20 times 2 is 40, so I have 0 equals 40 sine theta over cosine theta minus... 4.9, the minus comes from here, 4.9 times 4 over cosine squared theta, just squaring that term out. Um, so I probably should have multiplied 4.9 times 4, which is 19.6, so let me just do that right now. Let's just multiply, simplify that to 19.6. Now what I'll do is I'll just take this negative term and put it on the other side. So 19.6 over cosine squared theta is equal to 40 sine theta over cosine theta. I'm still kind of confused because there's thetas all over the place, but if I multiply both sides times cosine theta, cosine theta, cosine theta, what ends up happening is I'm able to get rid of cosine on this side and get rid of one of these and I end up with um, 19.6 over cosine theta is equal to 40 sine theta or 19.6 over 40 is equal to sine theta cosine theta and now we get um, to use a handy dandy trig function, you think, well, I, that doesn't help me anything. I don't know what sine theta cosine theta is. And so we would go up and look up if there's any trig identities that help us. So I'm just going to go look up in my trig identities. I think there's one that says something about sine theta cosine theta. And I have a trig identity. Let's just look at this real quick. I have a trig identity that says 2 sine theta cosine theta is equal to sine of 2 theta. Let me just double check that. 2 sine theta cosine theta is equal to sine of 2 theta. So that's a trig identity. I don't expect you to know that. I didn't know it. I had to go look it up. I just, whenever we get funny trig things, you go look at your identities list and see if there's something that's helpful. That's actually helpful. So sine theta cosine theta could be sine 2 theta over 2. So I can then actually do that identity and I can say 19 0.6 over 40 is equal to sine 2 theta all over 2. And now, I'm, now I can solve it, right? I can finish that out. Take the 2 to the other side. So I'm going to have to go up over here. So I end up with 19.6. I'll just rewrite the thing. Over 40 equals sine 2 theta over 2. So 2 times 19.6 over 40, and that's just a number, is equal to sine 2 theta. Brilliant. So 2 times 19.6 divided by 40 is 0.98. So sine 2 theta equals 0.98. But I want the inverse sine. So the inverse sine that means that 2 theta equals the inverse sine of 0.98. Inverse sine of 0.98. Oops, I actually have to know how to use my calculator. 
inverse sine of 0.98 to theta is equal to 78.52 degrees. So theta is divide that by 2, and I get 39.3 degrees. So that's a nice little um, use of trig and algebra. It was scary when we started because here we didn't know theta. And so when we were breaking things up, we have these thetas. And all we have to do is just be confident. Oh, let's just carry those thetas around, carry them around, carry them around. Eventually, we end up with something like this trig identity that can help us out, right? And like I said, I don't expect you to know those trig identities. If there's a problem that needs one of those, I'll give it to you or you can ask or we'll look it up. Um, but eventually then it ends up that we can solve that. Now I know the theta. If I wanted to, I could go back and find maximum height, maximum distance, um, time in the air, all that kind of stuff. I think you had a problem like this on your homework where instead of the theta missing, the velocity was missing, but it's the same principle. You just carry the V around and then and eventually you'll be able to solve for it. So don't be afraid of missing variables. Just carry them around and um, you'll be fine.